to uh, chat a little bit more about the business of CrossFit and really business in general. Um, chatted a little bit earlier in the vlog about this stuff. So well, let's get right into it. Um, I think most people that give advice on businesses specifically in the world of CrossFit are full of shit. Um, I think that if you're an affiliate owner, if you're a coach, if you're a business owner, be very wary of someone that gives you advice that doesn't practice what they preach and that they're not in the trenches. In the same vein, take schooling for example. We listen to professors that don't actually practice what they preach. You know, I think that our educational system would be a lot better off if the individuals that were teaching the youth of America if they were actually in the real world doing it because then these theories and these ideas could actually be played out and then vetted and I think the same concept needs to happen in the world of business specifically the world of our CrossFit affiliates um, and I think that the first thing I like to highlight is I don't by no means know everything or all that it is to run at a gym but I will tell you a few things I'm fortunate enough to have very smart business partners that I trust and that also we learn from one another and we push one another and we challenge one another and by no means do we agree all the time but we have different skill sets and we have different areas of expertise which allows us to learn grow and progress we also trust each other where we can make decisions without having to call each other up for every little thing businesses can't function on a micromanaged decision making process and I don't agree with every decision we make but like anything, you need to have principles that are in place that allow you to push forward. And the principle is, you know, if one of my business partners believe this is a good idea and this is the direction we need to go, and I'm not on board, but I'm not 100% against it, then we're going to roll through with it. And that allows a business to grow. Things that we need to remember as a business. So let's talk about some principles. Um, principles in business, grow or die. Um, it's that simple. If you're not growing, you're dying. Um, and what does that mean? Well, you need to be diversifying what you're doing. You need to be ready to do something you've never done before. You need to be growing in your own skill set. When I first, when we first opened up our first CrossFit gym in Needham, you know, we knew a lot less than we do now um, from every aspect of the business. But we grew and learned about it. Um, in from how to run your books to how to run your staff. You make mistakes, they're inevitable, unavoidable, but by God, you don't get better from them. You get, you, but you, in the learnings from to avoid it again, you get better. So I think that's, uh, it's really important. You, you either grow or you die. With that said, I, I'm gonna take this moment to kind of call out anyone that charges consulting fees to affiliates in the CrossFit world. That's an ongoing consulting fee to increase their revenue and blah, 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 blah. Anyone out there that charges consistent fees to help a gym, in my opinion, is a fraud. If you said, hey, Austin, come help me with my gym. We, you know, what, do you have, what do I have to do to, to get you to help me? I, I, would, I would obviously charge you a fee for my time and, 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 and resources and, and templates I've created. But I would say, man, after three, four months max, you shouldn't need me anymore at all or else I'm not doing my job. And I think um, because I can teach you how to do everything that I would try to, to hide from you and, and, and hold you through you know, years of, of a contract. And I think that's something you guys got to be mindful out there is, is what are these individuals giving you? Now, if you're, if you're paying for a service that you don't want to do, that's different. Or if you're like, hey, do my books for me. I'm going to say, no, I don't want to do that, but I mean, I'm sure there's a service out there for you, right? So if you're paying for a service that you're willingly giving up, that's completely fine. But if you're paying for advice and consulting and, and, and analysis that you could be doing on your own with, with someone that would have trained you in the process, be wary of those individuals. Be wary of, of books and templates that tell you how to run your business because Business is not a book, it's not a template, it's evolving. And if you're going to live one way, you need to poke holes in every other way, and including your way. So there's a lot of concepts and theories out there. Here, oh, I read this about this style and this, you know, blah, 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 blah. I still think that 
it's a really simple equation that the affiliate model is as simple as it gets. One main, main revenue stream, membership. If you're living off memberships and privates, you're going to die. That is not what the business is built for. If your livelihood is built off two revenue streams, one being memberships, one being privates, your business will fail. 100%. You're going to burn out. You will run out of time. You will run out of energy. And it's not a sustainable business model. How do you create other revenue streams other than ones that's 100% predicated on you and or other things? You need to have non-brick and mortar revenue streams. You need to go out and gosh, you know, find, you know, corporate accounts. You need to go in and, and, and help people in, in their places of work at, a, at apartment complexes, blah, 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 blah. You need to get out of your gym and bring in revenue that doesn't have too much overhead. Your only overhead would be your payroll cost for that coach for that hour. Your job as an owner or coach is to diversify revenue streams and bring fitness to others if that's what you're going to do. Retail is great. I would say it's a, it's a small, if not a, a zero-sum equation when it's all said and done. Um, unless you're a big operation, which is great, but then you're still going to have to pay someone on payroll to rock and roll with that whole shipping and receiving and all that stuff. So when it comes to running the business, if you don't have your five-year plan, you're probably going to fail in five years. I get about it myself and my business partners. We get about one to two gyms a month that ask us to buy them out or partner with them. And oftentimes we say no. And I'll tell you why. We say no because most people overvalue their gym. I'll be straight up with you. CrossFit gyms aren't worth that much when you really break it down. And I love you guys, but your blood, sweat, and tears and hard work mean nothing when it comes to evaluation of a business. You can't be emotional about it. B best advice I can give anyone about investing, working, anything like that is don't be emotionally invested in it from a monetary perspective. Be invested in it from a passion perspective. Every dollar I put into a gym, I expect to never get back. What do I expect? I expect to, to actually do what I love. When I walk in the gym and I can coach people, I can coach members, and I'm, I look around like, man, I had the opportunity to, to build this. It's an honor. It's not, man, I hope I can make my money back. I don't give a shit about that. Money comes, it's great, but I like to work. I like to put the paint on the walls. I like to coach the classes, tell someone to push their knees out, let their chest up, get their butt below parallel. And I like to have a beautiful gym that people are excited to come to and make positive life changes. That, to me, is worth it. Money comes after that, great. Just so happens, usually good things happen from that perspective. But... If I'm going to buy your gym, I'm going, to, I'm going to evaluate your gym for what it's worth. You have probably a shitty lease with equipment that's probably worth 50 cents on the dollar, if that. And a membership that is, is worth zero because they could leave tomorrow no matter what your contracts say. So therefore, what are you buying? One times earnings, if that. And now most of us, the, from the books that I've seen, most of uh, these gyms run their books like knuckleheads. They funnel a lot of personal expenses through the gym. Therefore, what happens is you have a non-sellable business because then you're, what you're going to have to do is, is tell, tell the, the, the buyer that, oh, I'm going to back out all these expenses. So then I have a better, sell, better, better, better business to sell. That's called cooking the books, whether you like it or not. So if at the end of the year you're realizing not much, then that's how much your business is worth. Even if you backed out personal expenses, it's not going to be too much. Gosh, I hope it's not more than 40, 50 grand. So then, great. So your business is worth 40, 50 grand. If you have a really strong brand and name and logo and, and infrastructure built, maybe one and a half times earnings. So these are things to think about as a business owner. And, um, and, and if you're going into this business, you're not going to sell this business for two or three times the traditional small business um, multiplier. Um, it's just not going to happen. Um, but that's okay. If you go into this thinking that you're going to sell, I think you're going to fail. And if you're going to sell, sell, it's because something hasn't worked. And that's okay, but don't be offended when someone doesn't want to buy your gym. And, you know, if you make out with anything, it's a bonus. But sweat equity means a lot to you, but not to most other people. Um, unless you start a business with somebody, then sweat equity matters. If you're going to run the entire business top to bottom, and you're not going to put any money in, but you're going to, but and you're not going to make any money in the in the in the beginning, but you're going to put your your time in, that matters. But you don't get you don't get it all. Um, 
take your emotions out of the stuff is, is probably one of the best ways to put it. But understand that if you want to run a business, you have to run a business. There's businessmen and women, and then there's idealists. I think you should swing between both of that, either end of that spectrum. And your biz, if you have business partners, you should have people towards each end of the spectrum. But um, the CrossFit landscape is changing in the United States. I think for the better, you just have to be better. You need to de deliver a better product. You need to run a better business. You need to be smarter. These are things that should have never been overlooked in years past. That's why you're going to see gyms that are successful will become very successful or gyms will fail. Just because anyone can do it doesn't mean everybody should do it. And that comes down to running a business too. Help someone run a business, but don't go start your own if you're not cut out for it. If you are, have the responsibility to know that you're making a big decision for yourself, the people that you're employing, and the people walking into your gym. Hold it with a level of responsibility and a level that is something that you respect so much that find every reason not to do it before you do it, like I've said before. But hopefully you find some value in this. If it fires you up, let me know what you like, what you don't like. Um, but I'm passionate about it. I love this stuff. you got to bring the pain. you got to bring the heat. But you got to be smart. Um, continue to learn. But man, don't blindly accept advice from someone or something just because they can tell you they, they can help you. Oftentimes, they're tricking you. It's like personal training. I don't like to personal train people unless they knowingly know what they're paying for and why. Mm -hmm.